What's happening everyone? Welcome to Decimal Tents. Now, do you prefer the videos that we've made in the unit? Or do you have a bit of a hankering for the ones that are made in the garage? The ones in the garage had a certain charm to them, didn't they? You know, man and shed kind of stuff. Well, for the next few videos, I'm going to take you back to the garage. And it's a project that I completed a few months ago, back in 2020. And it was for my friend Chris in his 2 litre TSI Scirocco. He actually took the car for stage 2 mapping and when the car was on the dyno, the operator, I don't know who it was, they discovered a bit of a noise coming from the engine. And it turned out that there was a bit of a nasty knock. So upon investigation, they decided to stop the mapping session. And then that's when the car came to me. Chris brought it to me, says, I've got a bit of an engine knock problem. I think I need your help. So sit back, grab a brew, and enjoy the next few videos where I take you back to the garage for this little Scirocco, Scirocco, Scirocco build. <laughs> Don't forget to hit subscribe as well. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Now I've got the Scarabo back in the garage now, and don't worry, I do know how to see it. Um, the car's still warm, so what I'll do is I'll fire it up and I'll be able to give you a little listen to the actual knock itself now in the garage. You'll be able to hear it perfectly. I'll rev it up and you'll be able to hear it just at 2,000 RPM, between 2 and 3. Uh, just that little bit of rattle. Can you hear it? It's just that little bit of rattle there. You know exactly what I mean there, don't you? You can hear that perfectly, can't you? So that sounds like perfect big end knock to me. If it was the main bearings, then chances are it'll be a bit like rumbly and a bit constant. Obviously, maybe it's increasing with revs. Because at idle, you can't really hear it at all. Um, suggests to me that, you know, the clearance between the crank and the bearings is probably all right at idle. You just start to push that up. The oil pump just can't, you know, like keep up with it. And that extra bit of clearance, possibly, hopefully, whoa, because of bearing breakdown. I'd like to think that it's the material on the bearing that's broke down. Um, hopefully, that's what we'll find. And the crank's in good nick. Big end bearings need replaced, and that'll be it. But either way, we've got to like dig into the engine. It's going to have to, I think it's going to have to come out in all honesty, because these TSI engines, the EA treble eight engines, they, you know, they have like that upper oil sump pan and that gets connected through the the crankshaft end seal so i think straight away this engine is going to have to come out without a doubt so i'm thinking full box engine out we'll separate the box we'll get the engine on the stand we'll flip it over and we'll be able to get access and inspect all the bearings we'll have to check all the tolerances and i'm hoping like i said before that it it's just going to be a, a big end bearing a breakdown and uh, we might even see parts of it in the oil actually but the thing is, because it's so quiet, it's really, it's not even a problem. The engine runs absolutely fine because it's so quiet. You know, Chris didn't even really notice that, that it was that bad. You can't hear it from, you know, it's a, it's a modern car. They're all, the cabin's well in, insulated. You, you, you really can't tell. So chances are this might not even be like, a, you know, a really recent problem. It might have been like this for a long time, in all honesty. But we'll not know until we get there. But I'm hoping that it's just going to be, you know, very very worst case polish of the crank hopefully the tolerances are good change the bearings and we're good actually i'm getting ahead of myself now we'll check the oil we'll drop the oil and we'll check the oil first yeah that's what we'll do chris did see he's got a bit of an oil leak as well which i think we can see here Chances are that is the crankshaft end seal that we need to get to anyway, so hopefully two birds with one stone and all that. All the rest of it looks alright. So the engine oil looks really good here. Now I know that we'll not see most of any particles until I drain it, but straight away can't see any fragments whatsoever. And the oil looks really clean. So I can't imagine that it's happened on this oil change. Mm. 
Nah, it's all good. I've just poured the oil out now, and in all honesty, it looked all right. There was a few tiny little particles right at the bottom, but not really enough to substantiate if you know that was a bearing failure on this oil, which I don't think it was. Chances are, if there is a bearing failure, and this is just guess at the minute, <laughs> um, it was on a previous oil, uh, and it's been changed since. Uh, if a bearing was breaking down, I'd expect to see a lot more material than that. That was just tiny, tiny little bits. So I'm not really worried about that, not really concerned. It's not great that it's in there, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so I think we'll just bash on, we'll continue getting the, the car pulled apart. And um, we'll see what we'll find, but it's coming to get apart quite easily in all honesty. You see the similarities between the, the at and ts the T for size, the TSIs, they're all, you know, ish uh, in terms of the top. And I'm really impressed at how actually compact and you know well designed or how it looks well designed anyway that the tsi engine is everything's just sort of shrunk in the 18 t's there's it takes up the whole bay but the the tsi's the, the don't and anyway i'll stop off and let's get on with it everything disconnected now coolant's all drained starter motor wiring's all removed i do need to take off the inlet manifold uh, to get the rest of the wiring off and then i'll get the loom tucked out of the way i've still got to do the coolant pipes to the matrix and i've still got coolant pipes over here to disconnect uh, but the boost pipes are off uh, all of this along the front i think i'm gonna have to remove every single bit of the sort of front of the engine so the inlet manifold throttle body alternator and get them all out the way so that when we actually go to drop the engine I can tilt it forward because it's only tilting forward which I'll be able to clear the turbo and everything from the back uh, so just a little bit more to do on top uh, and then I'll be good to go uh, Tom from Speed and Tube I think he's after some new wheels and that's Nick Team Prone Racing telling them no Ha ha ha!